start with the first talk, which will be uh, given by Yoko Van Damen. Uh, he's a mathematician, uh, uh, a leading mathematician, in fact, working uh, in the area of mathematical logic, to which he made uh, many, many contributions to uh, this, uh, this area. He's also been a, a, an active member of the community, in particular of the scientific communi community. Uh, he was uh, uh, a vice rector of the University of Helsinki. Uh, he's been uh, the treasurer of the European Mathematical Society. And he has uh, many awards, like, uh, for example, being a member of the Finnish Academy of Science and Letters. And uh, he's going to talk to us uh, about the present vision of the world after this uh, pandemic. So, here you go. Jacob. Jacob. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you hear me? It's always good to ask. Yes. Uh, yes. Sure I start yes. If I'm being heard. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And thank you for this. Um, invitation it's a special um, uh, pleasure to talk after the previous uh, talk by Yogendra Yadav because there are many points in common and even if we have different backgrounds you will you will see so here we go why isn't Every opportunity to reduce nuclear weapons in the world taken. Considering how beneficial it would be to the mankind and considering how dangerous it is to maintain the current situation. Why isn't every opportunity taken to bring down the two trillion dollar annual military spending in the world, considering how else this money could be used every year? and considering how risky it is for the world to be sitting on a powder keg. There is an appalling lack of morality among world leaders and also among the people who give them their support. However, in the face of this pandemic, we are witnessing a tremendous unanimity of on the individual level of what to do and a readiness to take action, which is totally nonviolent. I hope this readiness leads to nonviolent popular action. Um, I refer here to Satya Graha in the, in the terminology of, of, of Mahatma Gandhi that we heard an hour ago. To tackle also some other urgent human problems, such as climate change, hunger, energy, poverty, the lack of water, refugee and migrant crisis, lack of equality, lack of rule of law, human rights violations, let alone intolerance, xenophobia and racism. Together we can fight against a toxic virus. Maybe together we can fight against toxic ideas. People say it is impossible to get all governments to agree on questions such as disarmament. But the pandemic has got all governments to act more or less in unison, with a few exceptions. So mankind is able to act in unison for a common goal. What is very encouraging in this pandemic is that one can witness acts of solidarity, such as a sign in the hallway of our apartment building in Helsinki where an, an inhabitant offered to help old people in the building to do their shopping and take care of their necessities, other necessities. Such an act of solidarity is preciously tiny, but tiny acts can build up to something bigger with significant consequences. These tiny acts do not depend on leaders acting rationally, however helpful that would be. And I think this is something we have seen in this pandemic people acting rationally on their own following the simple logic that the more we interact with people, the more this pandemic will spread. And this will go on until there is a vaccine. I was involved in a campaign to change the law about conscientious objection in Finland when I was young. We were a small minority of pacifists. 
a handful of activists really. One objector was in prison and in hunger strike. Others organized solidarity, hunger strikes, demonstrations, declarations of solidarity, etc. However small a minority we were, the law was changed. This of a problem with the sound, I think. Indeed, Yoko, we don't see you anymore. I don't hear you. Yeah, uh, yeah, there is some problem with Yoko's connection. With the sound more than that, yeah. Uh, let us see if Yoko can go out and in again. I'm sure he'll figure it out. Let's just wait a few minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I will stop this filming. And I start the filming now. So you can continue, Yoko. So how far did I, I get? Through the pacifist movement that you were part of. Mm -hmm. and, and through okay. the solidarity uh, of your neighbors. Okay. Um, mm, okay, so I was involved in a campaign to change the law about conscientious objection in Finland when I was young. We were small, a small minority of pacifists, a handful of activists. One objector was in prison and in hunger strike. Others organized solidarity, hunger strikes, demonstrations, declarations of solidarity, etc. However small a minority we were, the law was changed. This showed us in a small way that nonviolent action is possible. And I here refer to Gandhi's campaign, which is of a totally different magnitude. 1989, it did not fall as a result of military conflict between East and West but as a result of East German border guards lowering their guns, deciding not to use them. While the superpowers were stretching their muscles over the Iron Curtain, ordinary people pulled down the Berlin Wall virtually with bare hands. Social distancing depends on mutual trust. You cannot socially distance yourself from people around you unless they are willing to do the same. Nonviolence as a method is similar. It builds on trust. It is much more difficult, of course, but I, main, I maintain that nonviolence, passive resistance, or satyagraha has had an important role in world history, which otherwise is dominated by accounts of one war after another. I can imagine that the pandemic crisis is very hard for many who are not as privileged as I am. I am thinking of professionals who depend on their audiences in an essential way, such as performing artists and artists in general. I can also imagine that this crisis is very difficult for people with temporary work or who depend on accidental income, let alone for people whose life was very different, difficult even without any pandemic. Indeed, many governments around the world have tried for good reasons to support people in their respective countries. Tremendous amounts of funds have been directed to attempts to help people in need, but also to preserve economic activities on the level where they were before the pandemic. Is the coronavirus support for business, businesses used to make, in effect, uh, oh, sorry, recognizing that everyone deserves to have a meaningful job, we can still ask whether the situation we had before for the pandemic was really worth preserving. Is the coronavirus support for businesses used to make, in effect, the rich even richer and the poor even poorer? Or does it try to alleviate the gross disparities we have in human circles taken into account when funds are given to businesses? It is well known that national and global crises, whether economical, environmental, or otherwise, often give cover to those who wish to implement regressive political agendas. I will now turn to myself as a mathematician in the middle of the pandemic. Mathematicians have it, in fact, easy in this pandemic. They just stay home and continue their research. 
a mathematician does not in principle need anybody else. But in fact, the research of many involves intense cooperation. Of course, cooperation can continue in a lockdown by email or Zoom. From that perspective, the pandemic isolation seems to have no effect on the work of a mathematician. In fact, there is probably more cooperation going on than before because Zoom seminars have become so popular. It has become a reality. What earlier was only a possibility, which few took advantage of, that any scientific seminar takes place online and anybody anywhere in the world when research groups previously had maybe one or two seminars per week, there are now relevant seminars organized by one's friends and colleagues all around the clock every weekday. As a mathematician, I have never been so busy as now. Even if I cannot go to my workplace, cannot meet my students and cannot give lectures in the usual sense. And I don't spend time traveling to work and back, which for some people may be several hours per day. I suspect that working from home will go on whatever happens with COVID-19. This means that the way we mathematicians work has now changed permanently. And the same may be true of many other fields in different ways. The fact that the Earth is a rotating ball, that is, when I sleep, my friends work and vice versa has become painfully concrete. So how do you cooperate by video when one is planning to go to bed, another is sleeping, and for you it is best time of the afternoon? Although things like Zoom make it possible to take part in seminars and work with people anywhere in the world, in the end, because of the time zones, you are limited to people in or near your, on the north-south axis, much easier than on the east-west axis. This is one of the strange consequences of the COVID lockdown and will to some extent be probably permanent. Despite what I have said or the possibility of doing mathematical research in solitude, or connecting with colleagues by electronic means. The truth is the social aspect is very important even in mathematics. What mathematicians do is they go to a concert with a friend, they go to an art gallery with a friend, they walk in the mountains with a friend, they drink wine with a friend, and they, then they suddenly come up with new ideas, which is of course what they were supposed to do in the first place. If all the quote unnecessary unquote comings and goings were left out, there might be no new mathematics either. Um, it does seem possible that there will be less travel in the future and thereby less meeting with the research. What I am saying is that mathematicians can go for some time without meeting each other physically, but eventually it will have a negative effect. This is the human side than mathematics itself. Among the phenomena of today's world, the pandemic has a morbidly refreshing scientific basis. There actually is a physical object, one ten thousands of millimeter in size that can have lethal consequences. This is simply an undeniable fact, which can be verified through a microscope. Although there are anti-science people, even among world leaders, people by and large, irrespective of political or religious convictions, recognize that this tiny bunch of molecules float in aerosols the size of a thousandth of a millimeter or a few meters or even longer if they generally obey social distancing and it has worked very well across the world. 
it would seem like an obvious solution to the pandemic that people maintain social distancing until a vaccine is found, tested and in use. As far as I know, vaccines have been found, for example, in Finland and in many other countries. The problem is the massive testing and resources for manufacturing. Mathematicians tend to simplify things, which is why mathematicians are hated by some. But that is also why they get results. The so-called Hardy-Weinberg theorem is an example of a mathematician picking up a problem in early genetics was why don't the recessive alleles of genes gradually complete the mathematician of his time starts his one page paper on this problem with the words called to the editor of science i am reluctant to intrude in a discussion concerning matters of which i have no expert knowledge by the way somehow i understand how his feelings about this and I should have expected a very simple point which I wish to make to have been familiar to biologists. However, some remarks of Mr. Utney Yule, to which Mr. R.C. Punet has called my attention, suggest that it may still be worth making." Unquote. Hari had to make strong simplifying assumptions, but still his formula, which explains why the recessive alleles do not disappear, is still the basis of modern-day genetics. Another example of a mathematical result arising from the simplification of a real life question is a problem, what is the right way to arrange an election? There is a mathematical result called Arrow's theorem, which shows that the only method of making decisions in social choice, such that some very weak assumptions are satisfied, is, is, a, is a dictatorship, which means that there is one person who decides. This is a uh, fairly, um, uh, fairly considered a shocking uh, uh, result for which he got the Nobel Prize in economics. Even if looking around today makes it seem as if many countries' conclusion is that the situation of preference is an Arrow's mathematical model. Still, Arrow's theorem is the cornerstone of the theory of social choice of economics. What is interesting from the perspective of logic in this unfortunate pandemic is that logicians, statisticians, and philosophers, for example, causality, or more generally, dependence and independence of, of phenomena and attributes. And here in this pandemic is one very concrete example. We can ask, what is the cause of this or that person being infected? In Helsinki, a group of students were hired for the sole purpose of tracing every infection from, from whom did it come, from whom did it come to that person, etc., etc., backwards as far as possible. It is an eerily concrete exercise in causality. Philosophers have asked, what is causality? But Russell famously claimed that causality it does not exist. It should be replaced by what he called functional dependence. However, here we have the COVID-19 virus or a bunch of a few hundred of such viruses as a concrete minuscule carrier of causality. More generally, functionally depend on what am I allowed to do if I try to avoid being infected? which of my possible actions are independent of me getting infected. The mathematical study of such dependence questions was started by Kurt Grelling, who perished in Auschwitz in 1942. In his posthumously published paper, he gave mathematical definitions of dependence and independence, which are appropriate here too. In my own work, I have continued Grelling's work by considering truth conditions for entire sentences involving dependence and independence concepts. For example, we have considered Arrow's paradox in social choice theory and Hardy-Weinberg. 
coming back to this pandemic. If we can overcome it together by following logic and with small acts of solidarity, perhaps we can overcome other, other human challenges as well. It is a question of will. And here they say that a person consists of desires, and as is his desire, so is his will. And as is his will, so is his deed. And whatever deed he does, that he will reap. Upanishad, 7th century BC. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for this uh, very interesting talk. Talk, in fact, starting with uh, uh, a statement about uh, atomic weapons and uh, concluding at the end to something more optimistic and uh, uh, also you view as a mathematician. Uh, I think we, we have time for, for questions and comments. Uh, there was one question by Salamea in the chat, uh, uh, in the chat box. So there was one question by our colleague Fernando Salamea for Yoku. Uh, oh, I, I see, I see the three more message. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 can, I can read or Fernando can read if he wants. Oh, okay, okay, Wherever. yeah, yeah. Fernando? Mm, you can read it, uh, Andres, if oh, you want. Okay, so for Yoko, around nonviolence as an alternative to power, maybe you can talk about your work around non-first order classical logic as an alternative to normal, quote unquote, thought. Important work on the periphery associated to Yogendra's remarks. Um, I I must say I don't understand the question. Uh, can you phrase the question again? Okay, I, I will I will ask you in in, in dialogue. So. And uh, there was a beautiful beginning of your of your talk about uh, the importance of nonviolence against uh, power, yes. and I yes. saw like a, a, a natural connection with your work on the non uh, first order classical logic, so logics which go beyond our normal uh, kernel of logic. And uh, I thought if uh, that, uh, that could be related also with uh, the peripheral situation of, your, of Finland and India, and even uh, the peripheral situation of thought. You are thinking beyond normality, something which is very important. You are thinking beyond nonviolence. You are, you are opening the, the way of the borders beyond the, the usual normal uh, understanding of our logic. Thank you for asking the question and for answering it better than, than I could ever answer myself. Um, <laughs> I think your, the answer which was included in your question was, was perfect and I, I, I completely agree with that. But I don't, I don't really, uh, I cannot uh, add anything to it. It is, uh, it has many deep ideas, I mean your answer, uh, has many deep ideas which I cannot uh, further, uh, further enlighten, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, but perhaps I, I can ask I a have, question. Sorry. I have, no, I, 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 I have a thought in my life along those lines that you say, but they, if I, if I try to say them again with my own words, which is somehow my, my duty, but I, I think they, they sound more somehow false than when, when you said them. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, may I ask a question? Uh, Mark? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Yoko, you are known for your very codependence logic. And dependent logic is the logic of teams, how teams cooperate. Obviously, the yeah. cooperation of teams is something that uh, was seen and has to be still seen more in the wake of the COVID crisis. Uh, can you comment a little bit on the connection? I, I thought about that too. Um, yeah. And um, 
Uh, it's uh, but unfortunately, any, everything that I I can say about it sounds somehow shallow. Uh, but um, I I moved with um, along the lines uh, and visits by uh, Wilfred Hodges. Uh, in logic from thinking of individual truth to sort of like collective truth in a collective uh, of individuals and um, of course one part of such uh, truth is i mean dependence and independence are such uh, also probability is is of that kind and uh, uh, and probabilities is, are something that we we are talking all the time about uh, about um, uh, in this uh, uh, pandemic, but in general, I think that um, um, I, I explained in my my talk my kind of my ideas about causality. Causality is, of course, a, a um, question which philosophers uh, and nowadays also. Uh, statisticians have a lot to say and have, have written numerous this team semantics uh, thinking of truth in teams rather than individual uh, individual instances is a way to to study also causality uh, and um, um, Yes, I wish I had something more interesting to say about this, but I, I, it is, it's, the question is, the question is very good and it is the right question. Uh, it's, um, um, well, I, I, I mentioned this um, uh, arrows, um, um, not only because I'm bothered by seeing the dictatorships uh, uh, rise in the world, or tendencies in that direction, um, but also because that uh, because it involves voting, which is in a, col a collective thing, is is an example, a example of, of and the Hardy Weinberg uh, theorem, which is related to the Mendelian uh, genetics, in which uh, our genes are, I mean, they are completely determined by the genes of. Uh, of our parents, so we cannot have a gene which didn't, which wasn't the mother's gene or father's gene. So it's completely determined. Um, uh, although it is un totally they come independently from uh, mother and father, so there's both the dependence and independence. Now, uh, of course, in this virus, there is also a, a kind of um, nasty. Uh, um, reproduction because uh, the the virus is a piece of RNA, RNA and it uh, attaches itself to the DNA of, 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 of living cells and, and and reproduces there and kills the cell and um, and of course there is there is a dependence and independence just as in in uh, rep uh, sexual reproduction in, in biology. Um, but um, uh, and of course, uh, all these vaccines. Uh, the study of vaccines is is totally based on understanding that process because we have to fool the the body to uh, to to generate the antibodies without actually having the virus there. Then there is something which looks like the virus, and the antibodies come there, and then the antibodies kill kill the actual virus when it comes. So. Um, there is a lot of dependence and independence uh, there, but I haven't, um, I don't have a theorem about it yet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There is a question by George Wilmers. Yeah. Um, yeah you mentioned, Yoko, that uh, the conditions for Arrow's theorem uh, are very weak conditions. Uh, but this reminded me of something in Yogendra's talk. Uh, uh, that whether you regard them or weak as or not might be to depend on uh, the autobiographical history of the culture that, that one comes from because uh, one, of, one of the assumptions is 
that, that the, the preferences of the individuals can be put in a, 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 in a, in a personal order. But it, it may be that in, that would be regarded as a completely unreasonable uh, point of view from certain cultures, uh, from the point of view of certain cultures. If you could imagine that a person might say, well, uh, whether I have a, my, my list of preferences uh, will depend on, on the community's list of preferences. So there is a solidarity there. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, so that was my question. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. So, uh, maybe it is not right to say that the uh, conditions are weak, because, for example, one, uh, not only what you said, but uh, the, uh, the cultural dependence, but also there is the, 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 the assumption that uh, people make um, uh, their decision independent of others. But of course, this is, we know that it is not, yeah. I mean, we, we think that it is not the case that people make in, independent their choices. We are, we are strongly influenced by our, our peers and our group, families and groups around us. So maybe it was not the right word to say that they are weak, but, but they are in their own context, they are extremely weak and reasonable, but the context, the analysis behind the, the actions, the two or three actions, can be criticized, like you did and like I also now did a little bit. But once we accept the context, the ac yes, so, but the, 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 the criticism should be pointed to the context. Um, I, I think that um, it's, not the, uh, it's not that people in social choice theory think that there is no other uh, form of uh, 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 government and dictatorship, but there is still a question, what is the right mathematical model? Arrows is one, one, and it's uh, perhaps supposed famous, but, but the more realistic models have to be more complicated and, and involved perhaps uh, concepts from topology or measure theory, or that's which, which go like, uh, make it more, more, more complicated. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments?